Hello everyone, in this update we want to show you how our software structure works of the TDX Copter. Now I have this face cam, maybe this makes things a bit more interesting while I go through the PowerPoint presentation. So let's get started. When we plug in the battery, the motors get powered directly, as well as the, the Iris board. Now the Iris board, this has the Colibri T20 module mounted on top. This is this 1 GHz dual core processor. It also powers the sensor board. So um, on the sensor board we have uh, the XP, our MPU stuff, and also the GPS and the 35 MHz receiver are connected to it. So as soon as the battery is plugged in, the Windows CE7 will start booting. And this takes just about a few seconds and then it's booted up and then it immediately starts the tdxcopter.exe file. And you can see here the battery, it has 11.1 volts, it's a 3 cell LiPo battery and the iris board does the power conversion so we get 5 and 3.3 volts for all the other sensors. Now the software, this tdxcopter.exe program, it has a startup routine which will read at first our parameter file. Now the parameter file is just the basic text file in which every parameter of our program is saved. Like this we can edit the file and then restart the program to get a, another behavior. We can also back up different settings or change them with our uh, graphical user interface. Now after the parameters are read we will initialize the motors and also to initialize the motors we use parameters so like the frequency and which motors are located where and we also read this information from the parameters file. Our PVM signal to the motor uh, runs at 400 Hz right now. In other words, um, the motors are initialized, we start all threads. So this is the LED thread. The thread is like a simul uh, program that runs simultaneously to the main program. So there is still, still our main program running, but now there is this thread, the LED thread. And what it does, it just updates the LED status. And we need this as a separate program so we can have like blinking LEDs or other settings. Then we have the UDP thread. The UDP, this is a connection over a wireless LAN. And we use it to send strings to the graphical user interface. We also have the XP module for this task. Now there is also the battery thread. The battery thread is a very simple one. It just reads the battery voltage every about one second, so we know what voltage we're at. The fifth thread is the GPS thread. This runs also at the lower frequency. Well, actually, the thread does not run at the lower frequency. It's the thread has a loop inside it, and this will run at the lower frequency. There is the PVM thread, and the PVM read thread for every channel uses separate thread to parse this PVM signal, to analyze it, to convert it to an actual value. And in the main loop, we wait for the start command. Now, don't confuse this, it with this uh, program on the side here. This is the graphical user interface. This is a separate program. And I only showed the picture here so you see the buttons, because there is this uh, green start control button. And when we press, the, press this button, it will actually start the control thread in here. So this is just an if condition and if this button is pressed then it will start it. We also have the stop control button which allows us to, to stop the control but we won't fall out of the main loop using this button. Only if you use the dark red kill program button we can actually close the main loop. And yeah the close sequence it will close all threads in a, in a sequence which makes sense. So we still have the LEDs to show errors and stuff. Now the most important thread is the control thread. And it runs at 125 Hz. So this means it runs 125 times a second. Again, it's not the thread actually that runs the fast, but the loop frequency of the loop from this thread. Now, as I said, it has the highest priority possible in Windows because we don't want any delays in here. To make sure it gets executed regularly, we use interrupts. 
Now the MPU 9250, this is our, our main sensors, sensor we use. Uh, it houses actually three gyros, three accelerometers and three uh, magnetometers. And also it has a DMP. Uh, this is the dynamic motion processor. It actually has this interrupt. So every time it has a new value for us, it will signal this in a separate line. In a separate, it's it's a, a little wire going from the sensor to the quadcopter, and there is a little pulse, and this is the interrupt. And we wait for it, and when it comes, we will execute the loop one more time. Then we have the GPS thread. It has much a lower frequency. We we run it at five hertz, so five times per second. It's actually quite fast for a GPS. Normal GPS have a update rate of one hertz. And we use the GPS as an interrupt here. The GPS itself, the, it doesn't have an interrupt wire, but uh, it sends serial serial strings over the URT connection, and the Windows library allows us to get an interrupt as soon as some data arrives in the buffer, and then we wait a little bit, a millisecond or something, to make sure everything arrived, and then we read out everything. So we use this as an interrupt. And we use this the same method to read the, the XP. For the XP, we use actually two threads, one to send stuff and one to rece receive. Now they have medium priority because they are quite important, they are more important than the GPS because all our con control stuff happens through it, so with our graphical user interface. So for example, if we want to activate or deactivate GPS or come home or all these things. Now we have the LED thread. The LED thread it runs uh, at 50 Hz. This is because we want to flicker or blink LEDs, so we need a higher frequency for that, but it has a low priority because it isn't that important. And you use the system clock with delays uh, to make sure it runs at this frequency. Now the battery thread it has also very low frequency and low priority. It's just so we know what battery level we have right now. It doesn't matter if it's like one second too late. Now you might wonder how do all those threads communicate with it, each other. And we did this with a simple way. We made a parameter class. In this parameter class we have the ability to save the parameters to a file, to read them from a file. This is the, the file you saw earlier. We also can get the parameters from the, from the graphical user interface. We can also send them to the user interface. And so this is like our main hub. Now these are all hardware things, so send them, write them to a file, read them to a file, but they are obviously saved in the RAM, so we, we access them with the threads from there. So we just, uh, we can set values and read those values, so the GPS thread can set new GPS coordinates and the control thread can read those coordinates because when we start every thread we give them a pointer to this class so they can access the variables there. At first we, we start a hardware interrupt. This is the interrupt I, I explained earlier concerning the MPU. Now we initialize the mot motors and set the speed to zero. And then we set up the MPU uh, and it's DMP. Now this is a pain in the ass because the DMP it takes a lot a lot of functions. We actually have to program the DMP new every time we start up because it loses its settings and this is a lot of code. So what you see here is like one third of the code we actually need. Uh, we did it, didn't write all of this ourselves. There are some examples. These are for Arduino controllers so we had to adapt them a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, all the code is available for free. So if you if you have a, a Colibri module yourself, so you can just download this from our website. And so we set up the the MPU, define all settings which we read out previously from the parameters file, and then we're good to go. Then we set up the barometer, which isn't such a big deal, and we check for our remote control. Now this is important because if the remote control isn't activated because it isn't powered on, then we get just random values from the receiver. And this could cause the quadcopter to crash or do just anything. 
So we have to know first if the remote control is actually activated. And then we are in the arming procedure. So everything until here was just initialization. It has to be done just once. And then we are in the arming procedure. The arming procedure is just a, a, a while loop. It just waits until the remote control is put into a position uh, in the arming position. So it's the, the joystick, the left joystick is pushed down and to the right side. And we do we wait like this five seconds and then we are armed and go to the warm-up phase. In the warm-up phase we do the same thing as in the main control phase but we don't access the motor. So we read all sensor data and store them in in the RAM. Then we start the main control loop and this is what actually makes the quadcopter hover. So if we are at this point in time right now then we can just put up the throttle of the remote control and we are able to hover. Now this main control loop it gets executed every 8 milliseconds and this is quite fast so as I said this is about 100 more than 100 times per second and this is all that happens so these few points these are what make the quadcopter hover so at first we just read out the MPU, so this is the sensor with the accelerometers and the gyroscopes and we convert the data to nice units. Then we read the barometer, so the pressure sensor and the remote control stick positions. We also have a filter there because the signals are quite noisy and we want to reduce this noise, we don't want this noise to get onto the motors. So first we read sensor data. Then we start, then we calculate our position correction with GPS. As long as the, the joystick is below 5%, we, we lock our current GPS position. And if it gets higher, then we measure a second position and uh, we use both uh, coordinates to calculate the distance and the angle. Then we use the compass angle uh, to compensate for the quadrocopter's orientation. So we know which motor has to turn faster to get back to this position. We also have a height correction, so we can push a button on the graphical user interface which says hold height. And as soon as this button gets pressed, we uh, use the current position as our target position and we subtract our current position from this position. Now we limit uh, those values, especially the integrators because uh, we don't want them to get infinitely high we, so it's a safety procedure we also have stuff like if we if the remote control the, the joystick angle is more than 15 percent we will automatically delete the integration part uh, because we don't need it anymore then it will work again as soon as we stop and uh, maneuvering the quadcopters ourselves also, if the quadcopter is on the ground, all the integrators are stopped because otherwise they will sum up and get extremely big. So that's the, the controllers. These are a few controllers we have. And in the end, we sum up all those values and define the motor speed. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it and got an idea how our software works. You can download it from our website and have a look uh, yourselves. The next video we talk about the LabVIEW graphical user interface, how this works, and yeah, thank you for watching.